Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm gonna invite you guys to stand. I'm gonna pray like usual and let's sing together. So Jesus, we thank you, we invite you, we know you're here. We know you hear us as we pray this morning. Lord, would you be glorified in our worship? Lord, we invite your, uh, your presence to increase in this place. Speak to us this morning. We need you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see the sun comes up.
shopping. Today's a great day to be your Valentine's. Um, there's also a Supper Bowl or a Super Bowl or something going on today. I hear local teams in there, so maybe go or support them. Tune in sometime this evening. I'm sure that'll be fun. Uh, we also have the Concordia St. Paul Band is coming at the uh, first weekend in March, so that'll be the 4th and 5th. They'll be at both services, both days, so Saturday and Sunday mornings. And there'll be a brunch with them after the uh, Saturday night service. So after the five o'clock service, we'll have a brunch with them, get to know them, and say hi to them. And the last but not least, uh, Lent is starting up at the end of the month. We'll have Lenten services every Wednesday. We'll have a noon service that's more so for the children, but you're all welcome. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesday nights, before the Lenten services on Wednesday nights, there'll be meals. There won't be one for Ash Wednesday, so the meals will start on March 8th. We'll have meals before the seven o'clock service. That uh, should be all the announcements. Please rise and continue the service. We begin our service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you bring us to your house. God, as we're here, we get to reflect on our lives, reflect on who we are. And we get to look at it and realize that our lives can be messy. That we fall short of your glory, God. That we seek our own desires. That we have ill intention for doing good at times. God, we know that apart from you, we are nothing but sinful. But God, you are perfect. You are our Savior. God, we ask that you forgive us all of our sins. We ask that you overlook our iniquities through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Remind us of that promise this day. Amen. And the good news for you today is that we are forgiven. We are saved through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sins are covered up in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to share that peace with those around you. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading for today is from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away and bowed down to other gods and worship them, 
I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life, so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him, for the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I invite you to rise and sing. There was a moment when the lights went out, when death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in his Do not murder, 
and anyone who murders will be subjected to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Rekha, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and they remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for marital unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress, and anyone who marries the divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but keep the oaths you have made to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the king, the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. Simply let your eyes, your yes be yes, and your no be no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one, says the word. Please pray with me. Lord God, bless, bless this message. Have not be my words, but your words, God. Help us learn by your love, by your glory, by your actions. Open our hearts to your word, God. Open our ears to your message. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. You have heard, but there's a lot of famous uh, artists that you've probably heard of throughout history, and some of them, you know, you got Van Gogh, you have Picasso, Leonardo, there's a whole bunch of Ninja Turtles named after them. You have my favorite uh, artist, who is Bob Ross. Um, I think he's a classic artist. He's, I don't know, I, I grew up watching him. I'd fall asleep watching him. I, I enjoyed watching all of his paintings. But there is another professional artist that you may not know belongs up on the board. And it's in fact yours truly. I, I'm very humble about it, as you can tell. I'm very proud of it too, that I am a professional artist. Um, that's my baby, that's my artwork. It's called Shot in the Dark. In college, I entered into an art competition for the art club, and I ended up getting accepted into the gallery. And they hung it up, and uh, as you can tell, it's kind of like a reminiscent of Bob Ross, and I decided I wanted to break up the cold winter tones with the red lines in it. And it was there on the gallery, and I was one of two artists to have my painting be sold. So I was very proud of that, and it was my perfect picture. And like I said, I am a professional artist, very humbly. So I know what it's like to paint a perfect picture. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of dedication, practice, it doesn't just happen overnight. And maybe most importantly, you have to have some sort of direction, some either boundaries, some confinement. It could be either the canvas you're working with, it could be the, the colors, the paint that you're working with. Maybe it's what you're trying to paint, the image you're trying to portray. But you need to have some sort of boundaries and guidance. That's true for painting these uh, actual painting, but it's also true when we think about how we live our lives, when we're trying to make our life what we want, when we're trying to paint a picture of our lives, the perfect picture of our life, it's important to know how to do that. And the same principles apply. You gotta be patient, you gotta practice, you gotta work, you don't just wake up one day with a perfect life at hand. And it's important to have these confinements, this guidance for how to live your life, how to go about your existence. And luckily, God does that for us. So God gave us the Ten Commandments. He gives us an outline. He gives us main commandments, but notably the Ten Commandments to kind of guide us how to, we want to live a perfect life, follow these commands, and you'll paint a perfect picture 
of your life. And these aren't anything new. They've been around for thousands of years. The, the Old Testament had them throughout the whole thing. So when Jesus is preaching this in our gospel lesson, when he's preaching the first public sermon, he knows his listeners understand these commands. He, under, he knows that they understand the image they're trying to portray, how to live their perfect life. So he addresses a few of these. In verse 21, Jesus says, You have heard you shall not murder. So here's a pop quiz. Which commandment is that? Shout it out. Which, which one? The fifth commandment. Good job. Verse 27. You have heard you shall not commit adultery. Which commandment is that? The sixth commandment. Good job. This next one's a little tricky. Verse 31. It was said, whoever divorces his wife, give her a certificate. Which commandment do we think that speaks to? It probably speaks to the six. It definitely speaks to the first with no other God. Maybe the tenth with coveting. Sounds a little tricky. And then verse 33, you have heard you shall not swear falsely. Which commandment does that break? The eighth commandment. You shall not bear false witness. So we know these commandments. It's always good to brush up on them every now and then. But the Jesus listeners, they know these commands. They've lived these commands. They've done their absolute best to follow these commandments and paint their perfect lives. They definitely haven't murdered. They haven't committed adultery. And if they do get divorced, they know that they're going to follow the proper procedures. They're going to give a certificate to their wife. And they're very careful about what they say. If they make an oath, if they make a promise, they're going to follow through it. They're not going to make a hollow and empty promise or oath. And even today, as Jesus' listeners, we, we have our commands. We know how to, how to live to follow our perfect life. We know we may not live the commandments perfectly, but we try. Right now, we're at church on the Sabbath day, so we're following the third commandment. We're keeping the Sabbath day holy by coming to church, gathering as God's people. And it's a good thing. Even on a day where there's big activity going on, and we know that going to church won't impact the game, but it might, so it's worth going anyways. <laughs> And we know it's not our favorite team. It's not the best team, but it's, it's all right. We'll, we'll still show up. Yeah, we'll move on from that. But we all, have, we all have these ideas of how to live our perfect life. And maybe it might be biblically founded. Maybe it's traditional. Maybe your parents taught that to you. So we're all here at church. Maybe we've been told when you go to church, you, you, put on, you put on the best clothes. You want to present yourself with respect before God, you're going to God's house. Maybe you've been told you should leave all the negative negativity outside. You don't want to come in angry or resentful. You want to put your best foot forward and be your best self in God's house. And we know that it's important to read God's word. It's important that as we hear it here at church, it's important to go home and try and get in a habit of reading God's word, reading the Bible. So we have a Bible at home that we read. And we know it's important to give thanks before every meal. We pray to God, we give him thanks for every meal we eat because it's a gift from God. We know how to live to put this, to paint this perfect picture of our lives for others to see and for ourselves to reflect on and see. And like I said, I am a professional artist, so I know a thing or two about perfect pictures. And I'm, we're at church, so I should be honest. I painted that picture. Everything that's red, I painted. Everything else I got for $2 at a garage sale. It, I liked it, and I got it, and then the art club president was like, hey, you should submit that. I'm like, well, I didn't paint that. I said, well, if you put something on it, you can submit it. So I, I did. I took the time to put the Sharpie in and put tape down to make sure the lines were straight, but I don't know. It, looking at it, it's, it's, I see there's holes, there's a lot of dents, there's a giant hole in the middle, and the person that bought it knew all this. I didn't trick them, but if I'm going to be even more honest, I was the only one that actually put my painting up for sale at the art gallery, so it's not that impressive that I sold it anyways. And I'm looking at this and I realize it's not really a perfect painting. It's now that I got a different perspective, I have a, the full picture of what's at stake. It's not my perfect painting, and it's not really, I mean, it's good, but it's, it's kind of messy. It's kind of devalued now. And that's kind of what Jesus is doing to us in our passage. We read part of the passage, but he continues on expressing expressing the Ten Commandments. He gives us a new perspective on how to look at the guidance to live our perfect life. So now we're going to finish up the passage with verse 21. It says, You have heard you shall not commit murder, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. 
well, that's, that's hard to do. I, I haven't killed anybody, but I know what anger is. I've been angry at my brother. I've been angry at my, my neighbor. I've driven to church. I know what anger is. It's, it's all around me. Now, my perfect picture, it's not really perfect anymore. Well, let's see about the other ones. You have heard, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery. Well, I haven't cheated on my spouse, but I've seen a lot of commercials with attractive bottles. I tell me, Jesus, I've committed adultery. That, that's not another hole in my canvas. That's, that goes against my perfect picture I've worked so hard to paint. In verse 32 it says, But I say to you that everyone who has divorced his wife, except on the grounds of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. Now, Jesus, you're saying that even though our divorce was civil, even though we're both in better places now, that it still isn't how you command it. It's not what you ordained for us. That's, that it's, it's harmful. Now, that's, an, that's another imperfectness on my, my painting of life. And finally, in verse 33, you have heard you shall not swear falsely, but I say to you, do not take an oath at all. Well, I'm very careful. I don't, I don't lie. I don't make promises I can't keep, but Jesus, you tell me not to make oaths at all saying my yeses should be yes and my no should be no's. I don't always put weight behind my words. I don't always follow through with my words. As I reflect on my life, as I look at it, I realize that I don't have a perfect life, that my perfect painting of a life is pretty messy. And it's not that fun to look at. And we get to reflect on how we follow these commandments, how we've lived our lives so far. And we realize that we've all harbored hate. We've all looked lustfully. Families are broken. Our words don't always bear the weight that they should. And maybe we come to church. We know we should come to church, but that's why we come to church. We, we don't come to church to experience God's word, to get closer to God. We just come because it's what we do. Or maybe, if you're like me, I pray before every meal. But usually I'm not really thinking about what I'm praying for. I'm not thinking about giving thanks to God. I'm just thinking about the food I'm about to eat. Or when I read my Bible before going to bed, I can read a whole chapter and realize I didn't understand a word of it, and I just am tired and go to bed. I'm not really digging deeper into God's word. And it's easy to look at our lives and realize that we all have fallen short of the glory of God, as Paul says in Romans. That our lives are messy, our lives are dirty, and they're not perfect by any means. It's maybe embarrassing. We don't want to show that for We don't want to display that for the world to see. But Jesus knows us. He knows his listeners. He knows the curveball that he's throwing us that our lives aren't perfect, and that's okay. Because we know that when Jesus looks at our lives, when God looks at our lives, all he sees is a red canvas, a blood red canvas of his son's blood and sacrifice. Because as our epistle reading said in 1 Corinthians, for we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. We are God's children, we are claimed by God. That means that when we're painting our perfect picture, it's not our picture that we're painting. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. God has painted our perfect picture. Jesus has lived his perfect life. He's died his perfect sacrifice, and he's risen his perfect salvation. He's painted our lives perfectly. It's no longer about our mistakes, our iniquities. It's about Jesus. And it gets covered up. First John says, But if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. No matter what imperfections we paint, no matter what errors we have in our lives, we know that our canvas, our life, is covered with Christ's blood, with this perfect red canvas. All of our sins, whether it be we don't have proper hearts when reading, when we're praying, whether we have hurt others in the past, whether we have a lingering stare, all of our sins and iniquities are forgiven, are covered up by Christ's blood and sacrifice. We get to live knowing that we are made perfect through Christ, that despite our sins and iniquities, we are covered, we are restored, we are forgiven through Christ. And we get to look at others with that. We get to look at others. We don't get to see their messy canvas. We get to see fellow brothers and sisters in Christ covered with God's sacrifice, covered with Christ's blood. We know that as a community of believers, we are all painted perfect by the artists of all creation. And it's in his precious name we pray. Dear God, we know that at times our life is messy, that we know we should strive to be perfect. You have told us, you have given us commands, but God, we fall short. But God, we thank you that through your son Jesus, 
our shortcomings have become strength because Jesus came to die for us. Jesus came to live the perfect life that he did, die the perfect death, and be resurrected. God, we thank you for covering up our sins, our iniquities with your son's blood, forgiving us, removing our sins as far as the east is from the west. Remind us of that this day. Help us share it with others. In Jesus' name. God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another chance to gather in your house, to gather together and worship you. It is good that we are here to hear your word and hear your love. God, be with all those that are celebrating the baptismal birthdays this week. God, be with them, remind them that they are claimed by you, that they, all their sins are washed away, covered up by your holy, precious blood. God, we especially lift up Marisa, Derek, Andrew, Dick, Allie, Caden, Dominic, Sophia, and Janelle. 
Comfort them this, this week, God. Remind them that they are claimed by you. God, this week we also give thanks for the mission of the month, the Project Dental Supplies. They'll be with all those that are needing new dental supplies. It might be objects that we take for granted every day, God, but we know that it impacts a life in large ways. God, be with all those that are distributing those supplies, participating in the fundraiser. Have it be your hands and feet on this world, God. Help them share your love. Help them share your word with all those that are receiving the supplies. Lord God, we lift up all those who need healing this day. God, we are all sinful. We all need healing every day, but some of us need a little extra help. God, be with Joan, Jerry, and Bert. God, be with them. Whatever their ailment, heal them. Be with their family, friends, be with their doctors, the nurses, as they walk through this healing. God, we lift up all those who are expecting a new member to their family, whether it be a son or daughter. God, be with them at this time as they're filled with anticipation, joy, expectation. Bless them with a peace that surpasses all understanding. And God, when they welcome a new son or daughter into their house, have them bring their child to the holy font of your baptism so they may be claimed by you and welcomed into your house. God, this day we also lift up the friends and family of Andrew who passed away. Be with all of those that are impacted by his death. Remind them of the empty tomb. Remind them that there is life after death, that you have conquered death. And through you, we have eternal life, that we are saved by your son, Jesus Christ. Remind the family and friends of that salvation, of your peace, of your love, of your word. God, we lift up all those for whom we pray, in your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I receive the blessing of our Lord from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.